Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for your patience and for joining us today. We had a, a little bit of a technical issue here at the beginning, but I think we are up and rolling and in business now. So um, thank you for your patience. Um, I want to welcome all of you to the Giza Online Master of Science Accountancy webinar today. My name is Lori Hayes. I'm a coordinator in admissions and recruitment here at Giza Online. I am joined today uh, by my colleague Grant Sipser, who will be helping in the chat and in the Q&A. And I also have a special guest here joining us, uh, Rishi Shah. He's a IMSA ambassador, and I will in introduce him here in the next slide. But if you'd like to take a moment to scan the QR code that you see on the screen, this is a great way for you to get connected to our website, get connected to our team, and um, that way we can um, help answer any questions that you might have. Throughout our time together on uh, during the webinar, if you have any questions, I ask that you please put those in the Q&A feature. It's a little bit easier for us to keep those questions organized, but our goal is to have all of your questions answered by the end of the hour. So uh, please feel free to pop any questions in the Q&A and we will address those during our time together. On our next slide, we do have a poll here and we love to see where all of our attendees are joining us from. So feel free to scan the code and uh, let us know where you're joining us from. Giza Online is a very global program. We have uh, lots of international students and um, students throughout the United States and all over the world. So uh, feel free and to add your location. I'm located he over here in the Pacific Northwest and Bend, Oregon, but lived in Champaign for many years. And uh, my colleague Grant Sipser is in the Chicago Champaign area as well. Um, Rishi, can you take a moment to introduce yourself? Let us know where you're joining us from and um, talk a little bit about where you are in the program right now. Are you able to unmute yourself, Rishi? I think you're muted. Okay, I'm gonna move along here. Rishi, let me Rishi, let me know if you're able to unmute and uh, participate, but all good if you um, have issues and then just need to hop off here. Sorry, Lori, I've just stepped away from my computer for a second, I'm here. Okay, thank you, Grant. All right, we've we've had quite a run of technical issues, so um, it's been it's been an interesting start to this webinar. But we are up and running now, and uh, looks like Rishi, you are able to unmute. So if you want to take a minute to introduce yourself, feel free. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Lori. Sorry about that. Wait, no, should, you're I, fine. should we yeah. be letting the people in right now too? Yeah, and. and uh, Sorry, uh, sorry to everyone if you hear background noise. Um, I'm actually out on a walk and I'm passing oh. by a couple of workers and their loud machinery. Um, so yeah, that's also the reason why my camera is off. Um, but yeah, so to introduce myself, I, um, I'm a Schomburg native, uh, went to Purdue for college, graduated spring of 2022 with a BS in finance. From there, job hopped for a bit, then entered the IMSA program January 2024. This has been, this is my third semester and I'm halfway through it. Uh, so far it's been great. And my plan is to enter public accounting and pursue the CPA after graduation. So that's just a quick intro. Great, thank you, Rishi. Rishi is filling in for us uh, last minute. So we really appreciate that he is taking the time um, to be with us today. So I do see a few people on the map. Um, are located there in is that Central America. And then we have over here on the West Coast as well. So thank you all for, for joining us. All right, well, let's get down to the agenda and exactly why we are here today. Um, we are gonna, I'm gonna touch a little bit um, on the University of Illinois and Gies College of Business. We'll have a more in-depth look at Gies Business Online, specifically the IMSA program. We'll dive a bit deeper into the IMSA curriculum, the content, and then we'll chat about some application tips and tricks. But before uh, we move on here, oh no, we're gonna go ahead and move on. <laughs> 
All right. Um, so as you can see on this slide, we're, I'm going to list several accolades that the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign has. We have a very strong reputation, not only in academia, but also in industry. Approximately 3,500 undergraduate, 35,000 undergraduate students and 20,000 graduate students. Uh, the University of Illinois is a land-grant institution, which means we are committed to providing life-changing access to education at an affordable price to or cost to learners from all over the world. 29 Pulitzer Prizes represented within our university. We're the number 12 ranked public university, according to U.S. News and World Report. We're the top five national uh, we are a top five national science foundation funded, which is the funded research institution, which highlights our strong emphasis on cutting edge research. 500,000 plus living alumni um, as well. It's one of the largest alumni organizations and you will have lots of support as an alum here at Gies Online. We have over 24 million library items and we are rated the number one most disability friendly campus in the U.S. Moving on to Gies College of Business, uh, we are the number one biggest business school innovation of the decade named by Poets and Quants, number one accountancy faculty by BYU Accounting Faculty Research Rankings, the 2022 MBA Program of the Year from Pro Poets and Quants, and top 10 public undergraduate business school in the nation, according to US News and World Report. Over 81,000 Gies business alumni that connect and network with you at events and online. Let's talk about the three main qualities of Gies online programs. Um, flexibility being number one. Uh, our programs are 100% fully online. This means that all of your coursework and live sessions can be accessed from your office, your home, or anywhere you might be if you're traveling for business, you're on vacation. You can always access um, all of the group work and all of the live sessions. We are also flexible in degree planning. You can take two courses at a time or one, depending on your work and life commitments. Um, and then our tuition is a pay as you go um, model. So you only pay for courses as you are enrolled in them. If you need to take time off from the program completely, that is okay. And you would not need to be paying tuition during that time. Stackability is the next uh, quality that I would like to talk about. And uh, we will go into this in a little bit more in depth um, on uh, the next slide, but we offer many courses and bite-sized options for you to stack into your next credential to provide all learners an entry point that works for you wherever you are in your learner journey. We, and um, as I said, we'll talk a little bit more about stackability on the next slide. Stackability is one of the qualities that I feel like is very unique to our program. Um, and so it it's exciting that you can start with something small and just keep growing and into a full master's degree program. And then last is online by design. We offer many core or uh, online by design means that um, since 2016, we have been offering our online programs. The MBA was uh, launched in 2016 and um, later the MSM and the MSA program. We offer innovative delivery of the content without sacrificing interactions or collaboration with instructors or fellow classmates. Rishi, did any of these qualities stand out to you when you were looking to uh, join the IMSA program? I'd say first and foremost, um, I wasn't uh, I wasn't really looking for flexibility per se, um, because when I applied and joined the program, I wasn't working full time. So didn't really the flexibility wasn't a huge factor for me. I will say um, online by design, the integration between Canvas, Coursera and sometimes external platforms like Yellow Dig, depending on. Um, what, which class you're taking um, and whether it's whether it's a quant or qualitative focus class the integration online by design really impressed me like fully a fully remote program at your fingertips from wherever you are um, 
and my device of choice is obviously obviously a laptop but that impressed me um stackability also impressed me uh because the next year um i will be interning and don't have to the program's been made in a way that i don't have to fill out like paperwork to uh, skip classes for a semester because um it's just how it it's just how it's built so i'll be taking one more class next fall take taking the next spring and summer semesters off but the good thing is no paperwork no paperwork required so in my mind i'm thinking that's actually pretty good and not every program has that advantage great thank you rishi all right, moving on to stackability. Um, and this is kind of a breakdown of how it all works. This slide represents all of the building blocks and credentials that we offer at Geese Online. So you can start with um, a free Coursera MOOC, actually, just on the Coursera platform. MOOC stands for Massive Open Online Course. Those are non-degree single four credit courses. Um, and like I said, they are offered on the Coursera platform. We also have the four credit courses offered here at Geese Online where we combine the Coursera MOOC with the high engagement component, the four credit component, if you will, at Geese Online. And then we have graduate certificates. We'll touch on these as well later in the webinar. Uh, graduate certificates, um, all of our graduate certificates are made up of three courses or uh, 12 credit hours. And then the then we offer three full master's degree programs, the IMBA, the IMSM, and the IMSA. So all of these complement an existing credential. All of these options allow for development of new and targeted material and knowledge. They all allow you to work at your own pace. And lastly, stackability is outcome driven, which means you will see a career impact with each stackable step. Um, so we have something here for everyone at Geese Online, whether you're wanting to take a single course, uh, earn a graduate certificate or get a, get a master's degree, we have options that build on one another and work together. So what might be holding you back from pursuing um, graduate education? And if if um, this is a poll, you can scan the code or you can pop it in the chat as well. Is it cost or um, the online format? You know, a lot of us did undergrad, not when online education was a thing. Um, maybe it's the time commitment. You know, do you have time to juggle this with your um with your career and you know potentially any family or, or other personal commitments roi you definitely want to make sure that this uh this degree is going to have an impact and a payoff um, in your career so you want a return of investment you want to make sure it's worth it and we have rishi here to, to share a little bit about that throughout the hour Difficulty as well, uh, or maybe there's another reason. So it looks like we have C and A for sure. Um, so we'll we'll touch on these um, throughout our time here today. Graduate certificates. So uh, before we jump into all the information for the IMSA, I did want to touch a little bit on our graduate certificate options. This is um, a great stackable option if you're not quite ready for the MSA program. They consist of 12 hours or three courses of transcripted credit. The application process is a little bit more brief um, than the degree application. There are no letters of recommendation required. And all 13 of our graduate certificates are stackable into any of our degree programs. So if you start with a graduate certificate, and I'm going to move to this next slide that lists them. Um, if you start with one of these, even if it's not in the IMSA curriculum, we our, our promise is that it will stack into your degree and those courses will transfer over. Um, they might transfer over as electives, or maybe you did a graduate certificate that is comprised of some of the core curriculum in the IMSA program, and then they would transfer for those courses. Uh, but here we have ours listed. We have them grouped. We have some very general business graduate certificates, and then we have more accounting-specific <clears throat> graduate certificates listed here. Okay, so the IMSA program, I'm going to go over a few quick facts for you. Um, this program builds expertise in the fundamentals of accounting, like financial reporting, audit and control, U.S. federal taxation. 
The tuition does range. Um, the average is right around 24,000, but it can be anywhere between 20 and 28,000 de depending on your course choices. Students can complete the program in as little as 18 months or stretch it out to 36 months. That's the average student is somewhere in the middle there. Uh, we have 60 months up there on the slide because the requirement from the graduate college is just that you create that you um, complete the IMSA program within five years of your start date. So for anyone that might need to take a chunk of time off, that's okay. You just want to make sure that the program is completed within five years. But again, the average range of students in our IMSA program are completing it somewhere between 18 um, and 36 months. We have three start dates. Uh, we have August and we have January and we have May. So we have a, our next intake for IMSA students is coming up in January. And, it, and the IMSA includes a total of 32 credit hours or eight courses. And 24 credits of the IMSA program will fully stack into the IMBA if you decide to pursue the IMBA later. So that's um, the, where that stackability option comes as, as well. Whether you're a mid-level professional looking to move into that C-suite position, maybe you're completely new to the field of accounting, or um, maybe you've been well into your career and you wanna pivot into the world of accounting, um, our program will, will well position you to advance in your career and increase your earnings potential. Here's a little bit about the class profile. The average age of our students is 36, but you will see students like um, that are not far out of undergrad. And then you'll, you'll see students that have been in their careers for many years, um, and then some there in the middle. But the majority of our students will be seasoned professionals with about 10 years of experience. Um, and then you will have folks just like Rishi, Rishi that are not too far out of undergrad and early in their career. 12% um, of our students are international learners, so you will find a diverse range of students within the IMSA program. 47 states and U.S. territories are represented, as well as 36 countries. 95 Fortune 500 companies represented within the IMSA program. We have those career changers and, um, and as I said, those folks that might be new to accounting as well as others that have been in finance and accounting for years, but you'll be connecting with all these folks from various industries and backgrounds. Um, so a question for you, Rishi, um, given the diverse backgrounds and experiences of your peers in the IMSA program, how have you find, found the diversity to impact your learning and networking opportunities? Yeah, sure. So, um... The program is very diverse, um, more diverse than I thought of when I first uh, entered in um, the first semester. Um, there are a lot of students um, like me who are fresh out of undergrad, maybe one, two, three years of work experience, and now they're looking to pivot into accounting or they're already in accounting and they need just extra credits for the uh, CPA eligibility purposes. Then there are other folks who are very experienced professionals and they've either worked in accounting and would like to switch to public and they see this degree as a transition. Uh, some of them work in entirely different industries like healthcare. I have a classmate who works in healthcare and uh, he's, I think he's trying to try to, he's studying this degree to learn the accounting side of his business and help out that way. Um, there's a, another classmate of mine, he's already CPA certified. He's getting this degree to teach at a local community college uh, where he lives as a um, as a part-time professor. Um, so yeah, the diversity is huge. It's not just uh, accountants. It's not just folks seeking the CPA. It's a very wide range of, of people. Great. Thank you, Rishi. All right. Now moving along here, we're talking a little bit about career impact. What is the value of our program? Well, here are some recent stats for you. 76% uh, of our students received a promotion or job offer during the IMSA program. 22% received a pay increase during the program. 
and 96% uh, satisfactory rate with overall program quality. So you can see the return of investment is pretty relevant here um, and that you can have an immediate impact on your career. All right, the IMSA curriculum. Um, the IMSA requires students to complete a minimum of uh, one business course, business management course, and one or two course sequences and principles of accounting. That's what we call, those are the prerequisites essentially to uh, enter the, or to apply to the IMSA program. So we do have a few prerequisites if you do not have those co courses under those belt, uh, under your belt, but um, we have Coursera courses that you can take to fulfill that requirement. Um, but the IMSA curriculum itself consists of 32 credit hours that students are required to complete. 20 of those will be the core courses that are required by every IMSA student. And then you will have um, 12 credit hours of electives. These electives will allow you to kind of customize your degree and gear it towards your own professional goals. Uh, Rishi, where have you seen the most impact from your courses so far? Sure. So um, the core courses, in my opinion, uh, they're great. They're also arguably the most rigorous of courses. Um, and that goes for all of them up there on the list, accounting, managerial, auditing, and tax. Um, the electives, however, I've found them to be very interesting. And they basically allow you to customize your education a bit. So a couple of elective class courses I took um, this past summer, I took um, uh, BADM 403, which is business and commercial, corporate commercial law. And that allowed me, that allowed me to see the legal side. It was a business law course. So there were, there was no math or Excel or numbers uh, involved strictly, strictly law, but my professor was great. And it really taught me how to think things through, especially in situations where there, where there are a lot of gray areas. And then one class I'm taking right now, which is Aki 569, that's data uh, data driven decisions and accounting that class it, it's it's amazing like my professor is a former chief data officer from a from a company and he's basically teaching us how to take data and excel files put them in more powerful languages like tableau sql um etc and then conduct even more deeper analyses than what can be done in Excel. So I really enjoy, I'm really enjoying that class and hope that down the road, I can put some data, put some, put some of my data and uh, analytics skills to use in my future jobs, whether, whether they're in accounting or outside of accounting. Great. Thank you. All right. And then a little bit, uh, a little note about the I, this is a question we hear quite often is what is the I all about? What does it stand for? Um, this refers to a method of delivery only it is to signify all of the master's degrees delivered online at GEES, but there will be no mention of the I on your transcripts or on your diploma. So um, definitely no need to worry about that. And then moving on to live sessions and to faculty. So you might be wondering how we are delivering this highly innovative content to our learners. And a lot of it has to do with our amazing faculty we have over 75 faculty members with many years of experience, over 200 TAs, and 55 GI staff members that are in our teaching and learning department. So basically all of these groups come together to create the content that we deliver. And I'm gonna move on to the next slide. This is um, one of our professors, Hayden Knoll, and this video is going to hopefully give you an idea of what you can expect in a live session.
Great. Thank you. Um, Rishi, can you talk a little bit about what your live session experience has been like and and what give, maybe give um, those attending a little bit of what they can expect with classes and group assignments and projects and tests? Yeah, sure. So um, really across the three platforms that I mentioned earlier, Coursera, Canvas, and in some courses, uh, Yellowdig, uh, depending on your class, that's not always uh, there. Um, but I've basically created a formula for how to do well in all of all the classes. Attend or, or um, listen to, watch and listen to the recorded videos on Coursera first, and then complete all the checks and the graded quiz at the end of the module. Then after that, um, go into the live session and then try to have questions prepared beforehand so you can ask them during the live session. Of course, that doesn't, uh, I have to take my own advice at times. Sometimes I don't always do that, but ideally that would be the best approach. And then during the live session, uh, take notes, active notes. And then after that, give the assignments a, a, a couple of shots. And if you run into problems, you can always reach out to a classmate that you've gotten close with. You can go to office hours. That's the obvious one. Um, the office hours, I've, I attend them every week. And uh, they're great. The professors are there to help you and to help you understand uh, what questions you have. Um, group projects are another one. Those are, um, they don't happen. I don't think they happen at the beginning of the course. It's like a little at the, either the halfway or three quarters of the way during, during, a, during a course on average. Um, but again, same rules apply. If you need help, go to office hours, collaborate with your team, um, whatever it is that you need. It's, fu it's fully online, but that's that's basically my formula. Watch the videos, attend the lecture, do the homework. If you need help, go to office hours or consult a friend or classmate. Yeah, Rishi brings up a really good point. Um, our um, instructors are required to hold weekly office hours. So that's a great opportunity to hop on, get to know the instructor better, um, network a little bit, or un understand the content um, even more. So that's a really good point to make. And then um, Rishi, there is another question in the Q&A about how many students are there usually per class? I know this can be arranged, but what would you say? Um, it's a little kind of a little hard for me to answer that because there are always those students who attend uh, every session and their cameras are on so I know who they are and mm -hmm. then there are there are those students who also attend the lecture live but their cameras are off and then there are students who can attend the live lectures and they just watch the recording um, after which is posted after each live session is done and depending on your class you may either have one live session or two live sessions a week mm -hmm. and they may either post different content each time or the same content and it's just for folks who can't make it to the first live session but I would say on average I have seen uh it can be from 20 to 30 35 students per class and then you'll notice a handful of students who actively have their, their cameras on and they take part in the class activities you can hear them talk you can hear them speak those folks might be I would say a little less, like a very common 10, 10 or so, 10, 15 or so. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's definitely a range there. One thing that I actually, I learned recently was that um, oftentimes for a lot of the, the live sessions, there's an instructor, like a professor giving the lesson, but there's also another professor managing the chat. So you really are getting a lot of hands-on attention, especially in those live sessions where there are large groups of uh, students attending, you're still going to have support uh, from actual professors, which is really great. Um, all right, here, moving on to online by design, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the two components that make up every course. And so the first would be the asynchronous component. Um, this is, uh, on the Coursera platform. And these are the non-credit varying courses that you complete asynchronously on your time, on your own time that cover the foundational material. It essentially serves as your digital textbook for each course. These courses offer specific career aligned training. You do earn a digital certificate that you can share on social platforms after it's completed. 
And the content is made up of videos, self-assessed quizzes, assignments, and peer evaluations. It is definitely more self-paced and self-driven. I have also heard a lot from, um, from several ambassadors that it is helpful to work a week ahead in Coursera. That way you have a good understanding of the Coursera material before you go into the live session. And then the second component is the synchronous component. And uh, these courses uh, we often, or this component we often refer to as the high engagement component. So uh, this material is building on the foundational MOOC material. It will give you the real world scenarios and projects to pull through the concepts that you've learned in the MOOCs. There's the 90 minute live class that Rishi was talking about on Zoom each week. And then you'll have small group breakout sessions in these live classes. They're offered several different time zones. We're trying to accommodate a lot of global time zones. So um, we are, they're offered several different times and you pick the time that works best for you. A recording is always available. And the faculty, uh, we mentioned this earlier, but will be available for office hours if needed uh, weekly as well. So together, the Coursera and high engagement components make up your four credit GIS online course. Networking and moving on to a question that another question that we hear often is how do our students network within an online program? Well, we hold several different um, several different opportunities. I have a few listed here. I connects. Immersions and I Converge. I Connects, we are um, meetings that we hold in metropolitan cities where um, maybe one of our professors or staff are traveling to, and we will invite prospective learners and current learners and alumni. We'll have professional development speaker, and um, we host these really all over the world. We've had them in London, we have, we've had them in Seattle, you know, so um, Really cool opportunity though, um, if you live near where we're hosting one to try to go to an iConnect. Immersions, these are trips that we offer where about 30 to 40 students uh, go on an immersion trip. We offer them internationally and domestically. And uh, these are opportunities to work with a real company solving a real world business problem. We just got back, we have about you have to apply for this to be accepted to participate in an immersion. But um, we just got back from South Africa and earlier in the summer, we were in uh, Singapore and Malaysia. So uh, we also do them, as I said, in the States, we've done Houston, Seattle, as well to name a few. And then I Converge is our annual in-person event. We hold it every September. So we just had it last month where we invite all of our current students and alumni to attend a three-day networking event on campus. There's lots of fun activities too. And uh, this usually there's about 400 to 500 students and alumni that attend and over, I don't know, about 30 to 40 countries that are represented. So pretty cool An opportunity to come to campus, meet your peers and instructors in person. And then um, the, following, the following list is what we refer to as our student-led opportunities. Um, there's the group work, that you will be um, that you will have in your live sessions, where you'll be able to network. Workplace is our social media platform. It operates exact a lot like Facebook. It's owned by Facebook, so uh, lots of engagement on that group as well. Student-led meetups. Maybe you live in. San Francisco or New York or Houston and our learners are getting together or Chicago, they're getting together regularly. Uh, you can definitely participate in these student-led meetups. Our ambassador program is uh, like what Rishi is a part of and IGBA is our student, um, is our um, registered student organization. Um, <clears throat> that connects our current learners with our um, with our university and they hold lots of uh, networking opportunities as well. Rishi, can you share a little bit on how you have networked within Geese Online? Sure, so a lot of my networking has come from primarily LinkedIn and classmates. Um, I've found, I've gotten close with a couple of, class, couple of classmates that I've appeared to take in classes, like the same classes every semester with. So we've gotten close uh, that way. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, reaching out to U of I alums, U of I alums on LinkedIn, um, where there are a lot of them here in the greater Chicago area, as well as the Midwest region overall. So that's been helpful. 
I have not had the chance to go to iConverge um, yet. And I, even though I haven't gone, from what I've heard, it's the biggest um, on-campus event where you will find the most uh, amount of geese online learners, whether it's IMSA, IMBA, IMSM. Um, def- it happens once a year, every fall. Definitely encourage folks uh, who are either students right now or incoming students to attend that uh, one, uh, once uh, once you sign up. But no, it's, it's just a great networking opportunity, just a great way to get in touch with the culture, geese culture uh, in, per- in person. And the last thing I'll say is I'm attending an event next Friday. Um, it's another event for pr- prospective students, and it's actually in uh, the town of Schaumburg. So that's going to be my very first in-person geese event where I will be um, doing my ambassador duties. So I've uh, been making progress from online to in-person. Yeah, we're, we're excited to have you there, Rishi. All right. Um, these next slides represent a little bit of just what we went over on this slide. This These photos are from our immersion opportunities. Um, so you can see some quotes here and some different locations. Um, but this is a great opportunity for networking and to experience learning sessions with various company stakeholders. A really, really um, cool opportunity. If you happen to uh, stack into the IMBA program. The IMBA program requires uh, three capstone projects to be completed and an immersion trip can count as one of those. So keep that in mind if you ever find yourself in the IMBA program. And then here's a picture of iConverge. This was iConverge 2023. We don't have our latest stats yet, but you can see over 500 students uh, were there and alumni, 38, country, 38 states and 32 countries. And then workplace, these are just some examples of some different posts that um, we've seen on there, um, attending a live session while being at the beach, which I thought was pretty nice. Um, our Southeast Asia group holds uh, an event every year. They call it the I Everything event, where all the learners in that area come together from that part of the world to celebrate each other's accomplishments during the year. And then um, another post from one of our students that won an award for her startup. So lots of fun posts on Workplace, also lots of support there as well. There is a group on Workplace called Career Strategy. I highly encourage all of our learners to get involved there. That is uh, where a lot of people are posting where they're trying to recruit from our pool of students, or if you are looking to connect with anyone from a specific company or industry, that's an excellent and easy way to get connected with folks that are either an alum or a current student in our program and um, get those you know questions, connections that you need. And then student meetups. Here are just a few examples of student-led meetups. You can see that these are happening all over the world. Um, so not just in the United States. Moving on to learner support that you will receive as an admitted student, we have an entire student and academic success uh, team available to you. You can go over your degree requirements with them. You can set up a degree plan. They have express advising hours where you can hop on and um, they, they're in like two hour blocks multiple times a week, hop on and off, get your question answered. You can also register for a one-on-one Zoom meeting with an advisor anytime. So you're not um, assigned a specific advisor, but you have a team that is accessible to you. Rishi, have you connected with academic advising? And if so, what did that support look like for you? I have, and it's primarily been for degree degree planning purposes. So uh, I would always join um, once a semester at the beginning of every semester to discuss with my academic advisor, um, Joe, who and we would we would go through our planning of courses, what courses I should take versus what courses I can add on as extras, as as well as considering the fact that I'm taking gaps, uh, two uh, two gaps from studying next year. Uh, what's the best course of action and that I can still graduate in a timely manner uh, that I can that I can plan right now. So definitely been definitely had some great help over there. I've never had any issues regarding tuition. Um, it, that's fairly straightforward. So that's also been great. Again, office hours for classes, I can't 
uh, recommend enough. Always go to them when you can. One-on-one appointments, professors are always free to uh, do that. All you have to do is just email in advance and they'll give you an hour uh, max, half hour minimum, I think, depending on how much time they have. But you no, know, one-on-ones are great. Email support is also always great. All my professors, they respond uh, in a timely manner. And even if it's not coursework you have questions about per se and anything else like to talk about their experiences or to talk about the current job that they are in and how to transition from a corporate role to like a more teaching associated position just any and all any and all thoughts um you can always go to office hours or book a private appointment or just do it over email but um everything you see here it's 100 percent effective that much i can say great thank you and then uh, moving on to the career resources that you will have, um, you will have access to the career strategy workplace group, which I already jumped ahead and, and told you about on the workplace slide, but that is where students and alumni can come together to network and job sh- job search and also um, post job open- openings. Big interview. These uh, This platform offers training courses and hands-on practice with mock interviews tailored to your specific area of interest and career background. You'll also have access to Handshake. Um, All of our students at the University of Illinois have access to Handshake, uh, to the Handshake job board and career fairs. This is a campus recruiting platform designed more for residential and on-campus students, but you will have access. You just might find that the career strategy uh, workplace group, LinkedIn, and other professional job boards might be more helpful. And then VMOC is a resume and career development tool that helps you improve your resume. Um, It will provide feedback and advice on how to enhance your resume as well. All right, so I'm gonna skip over this poll for sake of time, but uh, we are gonna go over the application requirements here on the next one. Um, The application requirements for our degree learners are listed on this slide. So an updated resume is required. The unofficial transcripts or mark sheets, we don't need the officials unless you are admitted and you will have some time to get those into us. Um, Usually we need them by the start of your second semester. And then academic statement and short answer, personal statements, all those prompts will be found within the application itself. Um, My biggest advice is to uh, definitely meet the word count and to fully address the prompt within the application. Two recommendation forms. We will email your recommenders a form. It's very short. I think it's about six questions. They can complete it in as little as 15 minutes. And um, that is basically what the recommendation looks like. If they would like to upload a letter, that is wonderful. We love to see it, but it is optional. Uh, no GRE GMAT is required. This, there is a scholarship essay that is available on our applications. Um, however, the deadline for this spring 2025 scholarship application um, just finished, just um, was just this past October 3rd. So if you are wanting to apply for scholarship, then you're going to want to wait to apply for the fall 2025 semester. Um, do keep in mind that our um, our scholarships are really highly competitive, but if you have questions around that, pop them in the Q&A as well, and we'll try to get those answered. And finally, if you are concerned that your profile might not be strong enough to gain admission to one of our online degree programs, the PAT program, it stands for Performance Based Admission Track, might be a good option for you. It gives learners the opportunity to apply to PAT as a non-degree student to take graduate level course courses and earn credit before officially entering the program, the degree program. So essentially, if you were to be admitted to the IMSA PAT program, you would take two uh, PAT courses and the requirement is that you complete them with uh, a 3.0 GPA or higher. And if that is done, then you automatically migrate into the IMSA program and those courses fully transfer and they don't need to be repeated again. So you're really not short on any time if you begin in the PAP program. It just is a nice opportunity for folks that maybe don't meet our admissions requirements fully, but that we really want to be admitted to our program. 
application review. After you submit your application, we'll contact you if anything is missing. We accept applications on a rolling basis. It takes about, I would say, three to four weeks before you will hear a final decision from us. However, with the IMSA application, there is a uh, video it's a uh, video interview that is required and you will submit that and then the final decision will come after that. So you could expect an invitation for the video interview about two weeks or so after you submit your uh, fully complete application. And let's see. Oh, and then also a little tidbit in the interview, you might be wondering, you know, what, what can I expect? Well, the applicant um, can expect to have some general questions about your career goals, experience working with a team, why you chose to apply to GEES, and any challenges or contributions that you will make if admitted. Deadlines. So the next deadline is uh, the priority two deadline. It's coming up on November 7th. There's no application fee. You will gain early access to the networking platforms, um, workplace being one that I was talking about, early access to Coursera for Illinois and priority registration for courses. And then um, if you apply by November 7th, you will start classes in January. The final deadline uh, to start in January, though, is December 2nd. So if you still need to get some things together, that's perfectly okay. You have until December 2nd to apply for a January start. All right, so why geese business? Uh, well, hopefully you learned a little bit about the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign today and all of our programs. I do feel like the three things that I hear our students talk about the most in terms of why they chose geese online is flexibility, affordability, and the networking opportunities. Um, you're able to complete your master's degree without leaving your job or any other responsibilities. Our price point is really unmatched, and we have that nice pay-as-you-go model along with scholarships and payment plans available. And you, if you live in the United States, you are el eligible to apply for student financial aid. And despite our program being online, you have numerous opportunities to meet and connect with your peers in person, just like Rishi will be doing in, in Schaumburg here pretty soon. So we would love to have you all join us here at Gies. Our team is here and uh, ready to answer any questions that you have. Um, so I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna skip this next slide, but if you would like to connect with our website and with our team, you can scan this QR code. Uh, you can also reach out to us at geeseonline at illinois.edu or give us a phone call at the number listed there. Um, but Rishi, one more, uh, one more thing. Any, do you have any last, any last bits of advice, or did did I miss anything at all today? Uh, no, you covered pretty much everything. Uh, the my closing bit will be, um, please apply and. Um, we, we want you to be part, we want all of you to be part of the Geese community for which, for um, the IMSA program and for whatever your endeavors, career endeavors are, whether it's to be in accounting or, or go into a more corporate uh, accounting finance associated type role. I will say this though, these are my closing remarks. Um, <clears throat> if you would like to work in public accounting, the IMSA program will help you in terms of recruitment as well as CPA prep. If you are trying to get the CPA, trying to seek CPA eligibility and just missing a couple of credits, the IMSA program will help you in, in that regards. Um, and if you are looking to increase your accounting knowledge for for any reason and need well, one uh, and affordability is, a con is concerned for an online master's program, I've never I've not seen a better program other than the I IMSA program when it comes to affordability for an online master's in accounting. So all that being said, I truly hope that you sign up. I want you to be a part. Lori wants you to be a part of the community. And uh, there's a huge need for CPAs right now. So if you do intend to sign up for the program and become a CPA afterwards, now is now arguably is the best time to become to become a CPA as there are a lot of changes happening in the industry and we need more staff to be be in the industry for the long run. Great. Thank you. Um, we do have some last minute questions rolling in, but we have another webinar for our um, 
next program that needs to start at the top of the hour. So I'm going to have to hop off here. But for those of you with any lingering questions, I'm going to shout out my email address. Actually, I'll put it here in the chat. Please email me directly at lbh at illinois.edu with any questions that we maybe didn't get answered. And um, we're definitely happy to, to get those answered for you. But thank you so much to all of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to attend today. Again, I apologize so much for the tech, uh, the tech issues. And then it took me a minute to get settled. So um, thank you for your patience with me today. And Grant, thank you so much for helping in the Q&A chat. You cover it all always. So thank you. And then Rishi, thank you again for your time and um, helping us out last minute. Really appreciate it. And with that, I'm going to sign off. So everyone have a good rest of your week and reach out if we can help with help with anything.